Today we're talking about triple harmonic motion in the form of a spring. So here we have a spring and it's being a little stretched out by this mass, but it's at its equilibrium position. And now this spring is an example of simple harmonic motion because it does one simple thing. It oscillates. So if I stretch it downward like this, it will oscillate negative A and then it's hopefully going to oscillate to the same height and let's call that positive A. Okay, so I'm going to try stretching the spring down until it gets to negative A, that should be it. Yeah, and as you can see, it basically oscillates to positive A, although the oscillations get weaker because this is a real spring. So let's say this number A was, I guess, five, for example, five and some unknown unit. So how could we graph the vertical position or the length of the spring? So we're going to write here uh, length of spring, or actually no, that's gotta be the y value. This is gonna be time, and this is gonna be the spring length. So, since we started by pulling it downwards before it oscillated, uh, then it started at its maximum height. So, that maximum height would be five, and of course the minimum height. The oscillations of this spring aren't exactly uh, two pi or something like that, but we can use a sine function or actually a sinusoidal function to model this. And to keep it simple, we're going to use the regular val values of pi over two, pi, uh, three pi over two, and two pi. So let's draw pi over two. Uh, we have pi, three pi over two, and two pi. Okay, this is the maximum length, and this is obviously where it starts from. Then it goes to its resting length. So that's going to be right at, let's say, pi over two. So we can draw the graph like this. And then, as it, uh, it comes slowly to rest at this, and then it starts compressing. So it comes slowly to rest here, and then it starts compressing the spring. So the spring goes to its minimum position, I guess, or its minimum length, which is negative five, let's say. And I know you say negative five is not a real length. I'm saying negative five uh, somethings ab uh, below or above the equilibrium position. Okay, so now we can just repeat this motion because uh, when it goes from the compressed state, the fully compressed state, then it will go back to the equilibrium state slowly. And then right here, it will come back into its max position. So the point where it began. So that's where it became positive A. Now I'm sure the values were much smaller than two pi, which is 6.28. But once again, we're doing this to simplify calculations. Let's call this P of T. And how can we model this? Well, since it starts from its max height, we can say this is five cosine T. Now, if you wanted to actually put the real time intervals there, you could mess the, with the frequency of this uh, sinusoidal, but we're gonna keep it simple because messing with the frequency would uh, mess up the derivatives as well. So now, let's draw the derivative of this, which would be V of T. Derivative of this would be P prime of T, which is gonna be V of T. So now let's draw a graph for that and then see the function. So, 
the <coughs> derivative of a function is basically uh, the slope at each point. So the slope here is zero because the tangent to the line at this point is flat. So that means that the first point's going to be over here. Now here, it's at its steepest downwards. So basically, uh, it's going down at the fastest rate. So that's going to be the max in the negative direction. And then here, it starts over zero again. And you can actually see this uh, with the real oscillation because you can see that the velocity approaches zero as it approaches the maximum point. You can better see this when it's uh, <coughs> lengthening or stretching than when it's compressing. So 3 over 2 pi, it's at its maximum height. So, uh, wait, this point should be actually at zero. Uh, it, it's at its maximum height, so it's going to be here, and then it's going to be back at zero at 2 pi. So now let's draw that. That's going to look like that. Okay. So now this kind of looks like it was just phase shifted a little, and indeed it was. And the thing is, sine of t is actually just a small phase shift of cosine of t. So Taking the derivative of cosine of t is as simple as minus sine of t. So it would be minus 5 sine of t. I believe to increase the frequency, uh, you would add a coefficient in front of time. And if you wanted to take the derivative of that, you would just put the coefficient outside according to the chain rule. Now let's do v prime of t, which is going to be the acceleration over time. So what's it going to look like? Well, we'll see. So the acceleration here is at its max negative because velocity is the uh, fastest decreasing over here. Velocity is, uh, has a slope of zero over here, flat. That, so let's already draw this part. And here, it's... <coughs> Okay, and here it's at zero once again. Uh, sorry, that's the position graph. So we're looking at the velocity graph whose slope is the max positive over here. So we would draw this. And then the slope of the velocity is zero here, so it goes back down to zero. And then the slope of velocity is the l lowest here, so it goes there. So that's acceleration. And you might notice that it's just a flipped version of p of t. So it's minus 5 cosine t. You can further prove this because the derivative of sine of t is just cosine t. And I just realized that I put an extra parenthesis over here. So goodbye. Okay. So that's it for today. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to celebrate Black History Month. Uh, and what black scientists have done for our community by going to this website up here.